last night they dreamt I was back in Anima County, but the truth is I never left. I had been a nurse at the hospital in Tunbridge Wells that Dr. Guthrie had founded, and when he died, I had been engaged to come to Anima Kerrick as a lady's companion. I graduated to housekeeper. Not all were pleased about that. What are you two playing at? There were stable lads I had to keep in place and serving maids who didn't know their place. Luckily, I had my little dog, my faithful companion, followed me everywhere. She protected me from them all. I couldn't have stayed without my scamp. It was I who did all the ordering for the house. I supervised the weekly shopping list for Carnew's Grocery in Coot Hill. And it was I who ordered each day's vegetables from the kitchen garden. And it was there at Carnew's that I first set eyes on Duncan. Duncan Campbell he was. There was one special day. One day I remembered for the rest of my life. Duncan arrived to say goodbye. We were to go out on the lake and take Mrs. G. But she said she preferred to stay indoors. He was so handsome in his uniform, a fine man. We stayed out almost till sunset. Duncan told me he had to leave for France. He promised me then, whatever happened, he would come back for me. He never did. I don't know why. That was the last time I saw Duncan Campbell. But I have searched for him every day and every night. There were stories, of course, and being Ireland, there were spiteful stories. There had been moments from time to time when I had been doubtful of him. Of course, there were rivals. All the girls liked him, and many of them threw themselves at him. There was one maid servant in particular, a cheeky young hussy. Not everybody was trustworthy, but I kept my eye on them all, and I've been watching them since. My brother Tom knew his family in England before Duncan was garrisoned in Ireland. He never liked the Campbells. He said they weren't to be trusted with money or women. He thought I was a fool to be weighty. He said the man had never been serious about me, but I knew better. I walk by the lake every day and at night I wander the house. I look into every room just as I used to, to make sure Maisie and Lizzie are keeping things as they should. I spend the day in the ways we used to. I still like a game of cards with Mrs. G. I was always a great one for the knitting. I've spent many lonely hours there since. I listen for his footstep on the stairs. Sometimes I think I hear him calling to me. Sometimes when the wind is strong on an autumn evening and the door blows open in the way it used to, my heart races and I think he's come again, finally. My Duncan is here again. And I think she's going fast. 
And I think you should get They here said I soon. died of pneumonia. Better late than never. So Tony telephoned my brother Tom. He didn't want to come over. I begged him then to take me home. He went to see the undertakers in Coutel and decided that it wasn't worth the expense. They had my body cremated. I begged him then to take my ashes home at least. But oh no, even that was too much for him. I implored him to take me home. Take me home, Tom, I said, take me home. He scattered my ashes in the garden, under the rose bush, and they're there to this day. And I am here still, waiting and watching. I do. 